Hello pilots and welcome to a new video. Yeah, finally, it was time for my first flight of this year, 2022. And this time it was a little test flight of my Talent 250G. The reason why it was a test flight is um, a few pilots here from Germany and I, we have currently a little fun, just for fun challenge. Um, running uh, the goal is to build an aircraft on our seaplane with m a maximum of 250 grams of weight and reaching as much travel distance as possible for my test or for my flight I selected the Talon 250G because that plane is um, as close to 250 gram as it can be already compared to my other planes I have and yeah, this was the first test run here. Um, you see the basically the second flight that was with the lithium ion pack I want to use for the actual challenge. And before that I was flying with an uh, 1600 milliamp hour LiPro just to dial something in, do a quick auto tune and see how it goes and if the navigation, if the waypoint navigation is reliable. So yeah, as you can see, uh, I have loaded a waypoint mission. Um, it's basically a very simple mission that only has six waypoints in a hexagon uh, shape. The last waypoint of the mission has a jump command integrated, an infinite infinite jump. So it always starts over again on waypoint I one and does the mission without any interruption and yeah basically until I interrupt or until the battery runs out and that was what I was starting here. The conditions weren't really ideal. Uh, we had some wind so on average 15 kilometers per hour wind uh, with some gusts and in that area because there is a big river uh, in the south of the airfield uh, there are some strong up and down winds, basically rolling air masses over the field. So uh, Einav constantly had to adjust the altitude and this caused a lot of additional power burn. Also the current sensor was not uh, properly calibrated, so I was actually uh, consuming much more current than it shows on the OSD. But as I said, it was just a first test flight um, to see how it goes. I will optimize that further and uh, do more flights in the future. So this is only part one of a small uh, challenge series. Um, yeah, about the setup, as I said, it's a Talon 250G from ZOHD. It has uh, the plug and play setup. So stock servo, stock motor, stock propeller. Um, I have replaced the ESC with an old quad ESC that can run down um, at least at least in this flight uh, that can go down to I think 2.9 or 3 volts or so and is lighter than the stock one. I needed that weight saving to hit the 250 G mark but at the end I reverted back to the stock ESC and slimmed that down by removing the heat uh, spreader and the shrink tube and some of the cables to get it nearly at the same rate. The reason is that the stock one can go further down in voltage and uh, yeah, doesn't make such weird noises on the motor uh, when running at medium power on 2S. The rest of the setup, uh, it's a Maytag F411WSE, INA 4.0, it's only auto-tuned, most settings are completely on stock. And an R9MM receiver with access protocol as well as an TBS Unify Nano V1.1 VTX and an Cadix EOS 2 FPV camera. So yeah, the test was uh, relatively successful. At the beginning the uh, plane was flying well and I decided, because I wanted to uh, kill some time, to switch to another plane and I launched the Alpha Strike. And here, just for fun, I tried to catch up with the Talon 250G that was still running in circuits. Unfortunately, here the Alpha Strike was uh, also just updated to INA 4.0, but I forgot to uh, upload or re-upload the fonts. And as there has a lot of, uh, there are a lot of changes in the font IDs. Uh, most of the items on the OSD were completely screwed, and showed the wrong symbols here. 
But anyway, it was uh, fun to fly around uh, at least one pack with the new uh, batteries I ordered just to try them out. But yeah, let's switch back to the Talon 250G here. At this point, we are 60 minutes in the flight. We traveled a complete distance of 39 kilometers. So the average speed is close to 40 kilometers per hour at this point. Uh, this is also mostly bef because of the wind, because usually the cruise speed of this plane should be between 45 to 50 kilometers per hour when there is no wind. And uh, yeah, this was also the point uh, where I realized that something must be wrong with the current sensor. Uh, later, when I went back home and I checked the calibration, um, I found also what the issue is. Um, the problem with the W as uh, with the F411 WSE is that it needs some minimum current because it be before it even starts to show a rise in current consumption. So my fault was that I calibrated it also including the idle current with no motor running, but this always threw off my calibrated values. So uh, after that I switched to uh, different methods that, that I said I, for idle throttle I calibrate the current with at least one amp for the lowest measurement point. So the idle throttle with only the electronics and no motor running will be off of course, it will show too much at this point, but at least at least in flight I tested from 1.1 or 1.2 amps up to 6 or 7 amps what it pulls at full throttle. The scale is now on spot within like 0.05 amps or so. So in the next flight the power consumption should be correct. Also what I did is I waited until the battery has a very low voltage state. At this In this case it's 3.26 volts during cruise. And then I slightly adjusted the uh, cruise throttle value because I want to make sure that uh, the cruise throttle is at a point where it even can hold the altitude or maybe slightly climb when the uh, battery goes down. Because on, the, on a 2S lithium iron, iron battery you have a very big voltage range and at the end you will fly with just 6 volt of uh, battery power. And it will be really hard for the plane to fly or to climb and the RPM of the motor also go down. So I tried to make sure that I compensate for that and adjusted the uh, cruise throttle accordingly. Yeah, so you see uh, the flight time at this point now is 75 minutes. We are at 48.2 kilometers. Uh, it's at this point I decided, okay, let's go back on the radio and switch into cruise mode because I just don't want to have the plane um, completely autonomous at this point um, just in case it tries to make a rapid climb because of a wind gust or so I don't want to have it uh, burning the last bit of battery and going in under voltage and shut down 400 or 500 meters away unfortunately this didn't really work out uh, because I was on my bench test I measured uh, 2.6 I think 2.6 volt uh, cell voltage before the ESC cuts off actually in the field it did cut off at 2.8 volts so my last uh, trip I made I wanted to fly out against the wind one last time turn around come back and then land the plane at 60 kilometers but yeah this turned out uh, to not work and after the turn I lost some altitude, cruise mode tried to climb, or I had to climb anyway uh, to not crash into the field. The voltage dropped be below 2.8 volts and the uh, plane, yeah, it didn't crash but uh, it had a, a, a bit of a hard landing because it was not powered and it stalled. So yeah, that was the last uh, manual pass that was successfully. After that I turned around the last time and uh, tried to squeeze out the last bit of power out of this battery. As you can see in the, at the bottom uh, it says 2600 mAh used, but that's actually not true. Uh, my charger has put in 2800 in the battery, but also that is not correct because the ISDT chargers 
are notorious for not uh, showing very accurate charging uh, currents. So the milliamp hours it puts in is always a little bit off. My ICT K2 shows too little current. My old Q6 Pro shows too high current. So uh, you cannot really rely on them. So yeah, here you see it's you, you see now the uh, last pass against the wind and in the turn the power drops and the plane goes down. But I learned a lot during that flight. I hope uh, you also enjoyed watching the video and uh, will follow me on that. I hope I will someday manage to get maybe 80 or 90 kilometers. We'll see. If you like that video, then please leave a thumbs up. Also leave a subscription and we see you. I see I will see you in the next one.